Okay, so how do we make something like this where we have basically a strap clamp and we want to place the bolt at the T-slot but be able to control the angle? So here we can see the fixture. I mean, this is obviously over-redundant, <laughs> but uh, I'm just using this as a test file to make sure that these are, you know, I didn't make any silly mistakes. So we're going to go ahead and build one of these uh, clamps. Uh, well, here, really quick before we do that, let's go in here and you can see where if I double click this clamp and I want to change the angle, I can do that. So I'll make this, uh, let's just say it's 180. And when I do that, it will rotate about the, the bolt. So I'll make that back to 210, which would be a little bit more appropriate, or, you know, whatever, 200 so I can get a nice flush uh, on whatever this would be actually sitting on. Okay, so I've read this clamp in, and this is a clamp that is from the Mighty Byte website. It's a six inch clamp. So if you wanna follow along, you can pause and download their, uh, their T-slot product, which is a strap clamp. It's the six inch with a 5 eighths by 11 bolt that would fit in there. Um, so what I want to do, this is going to sit in the T-slot, and in my head I'm thinking the way that I would use this in a spree, when I read this in, I'm probably going to want to rotate around this, um, this bolt that would uh, be tightened to, to produce the force to hold down the workpiece. So I'm going to want to uh, maybe center this here so that when I rotate, it's just going to rotate around this point, but the zero point is over here. So. Um, the first thing that I want to do is, uh, this is already oriented in Z, so I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, but if you wanted to orient it around Z, you can pick any of these flat faces and just say align Z. And let's just go ahead and do that, I guess, just so everybody's doing the same thing. So whatever product you're using, whatever you know type of uh, fixture item you want to create, you want to make sure that it's first oriented in the right position so that it would be sitting on the table the way it, it would in real life. Now I want to position this correctly in the in space so that it would make sense for me. So what I'm going to do here is uh, there's nothing really in the center here that I could use because these two radii are off center. Um, and the midpoint, uh, what I'll do is I'll just use a piece of geometry for that. So I'll go to the geometry, go to, go to segment, two, and I'll pick at the top, there's these two uh, endpoints for those fillets, and this would give me this snap point right here in the center. So what I'm going to do here then is just come, come to home, say move origin, and pick that center point, and now my strap clamp is positioned at the home position. So the Z zero, x zero, y zero is right here. But now I wanna shift this whole thing upward. So I'm gonna grab this bottom and hold shift on my keyboard and pick a line Z again. And you'll see now that my clamp is positioned so that the Z zero point is at the face that would uh, you know, be flush up against whatever work piece that I'm, I'm holding down. So now, um, <clears throat> we can save this out, but I want to uh, grab CAD, and I grabbed some um, uh, models for uh, metric uh, Allen bolts, and I'm going to go ahead and just basically drag one of those in into the uh, into the screen here. Okay, so I dragged in a metric bolt here, and this bolt, um, you know, it is not oriented properly. It's also not the right size. So we're going to uh, make this a little bit bigger. Um, what I want to do, well, this is an M10 bolt, so let's, let's scale this up. I'm going to go ahead and grab this. Um, we'll just say Control-C or right-click, copy, and we're going to say scale. And we're going to move this, and uh, this one, so this one was a 5 eighths. So what I'm going to do here is just say, 
uh, 0.625 divided by 0.393. And yeah, the origin is fine because we're going to be moving this anyway. And hopefully that's the right size. It kind of looks like the right size. So now what I want to do <coughs> is uh, I want to come up here back to this center point. And I'm going to just say, uh, I'm going to call a work plane bolt. And now I want to make a work plane on the bottom face of this head. And we'll come here to work plane from geometry. And I'll pick this. And I can see that the work plane is oriented the wrong way. So we'll come here to rotate UVW. And I'm just going to do a 180 by X, 0, 0. And now it's flipped. So now what I could do, since this is already highlighted, if, if you're, you don't have it highlighted, just, you know, pick it again. Right click, copy, align plane. And then we're going to move. And then we're going to align it to the bolt plane. And now, uh, yeah, this looks like it slides right in there barely. So it looks pretty good. Um, you know, I had a metric bolt, so I made it into a standard imperial, whatever. It's going to be close enough. And uh, at this point now, um, you know, we can go back to the XYZ and utilize this as my reference, my bolt head is going to appear with this GDML assembly, and I'll be able to control uh, wherever I want to put this on the screen that way. Now, um, if I do want to every, you know, one of these, I like to just put an additional uh, fixture adapter and work uh, workpiece adapter. So I'm just going to hit the translate and just pick maybe the center here, and come over here and say, uh, fixture adapter one, workpiece adapter one, just in case. And then this one, I don't need. I'm gonna get rid of that. And, you know, here's another thing. If I wanna put one, you know, basically as my little stopper here, we can grab, uh, well, let's, uh, yeah, let's grab this bolt and Let's go, let's do that. Let's do this undo here so I get my bolt back. So what I did is I just hit Control Z on my keyboard and undid deleting that work plane just so I got this back. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna take this, highlight it, and I'm gonna say copy align plane. And we're gonna make a copy and this time I'm gonna say select using geometry. And I'm gonna say okay, but I'm gonna rotate and grab this edge. And I get another bolt there. And now what I wanna do is just highlight this one and say copy, or again, right click and copy, or control C and copy on your keyboard and say rotate. I'm gonna move 180 degrees. I'm not gonna rotate about the origin, I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna say that. And this is sticking proud, but hey, for a collision checking, that's okay. Um, you know, depending on how far up this is, I've got a little bit of threading that's sticking up out of the top of this guy. And at this point, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and save this out as a fixture GGML. So I'm gonna say right click, uh, left click on the file and say save as we're going to come down here to fixture file and we're going to put this in my strap clamp folder and we'll just save that out and we're ready to use it. So now if I reload that file that I was looking at before, we could come to the machine setup and we can load this, you know, wherever the heck we want. Um, so let's say we were going to actually hold down the work piece on this one. So what I'm gonna do uh, on that one, you'll see that you know this strap clamp is actually attached to this vise. So if I move this vise, all of this stuff is gonna move with it, okay? So let's, let's do that really quick. So I can see my vectors here, so along X, if I change this from 16 to 18, 
and hit the tab key, you'll see that everything moved along with it. My, um, my little T-slot clamp, my strap clamp, my multi-rail, the workpiece, because if I say OK, you'll see that the workpiece is also underneath this, the hierarchy. All of these components are listed and attached to this rail. So when I move this rail, everything's going to move. So I don't have to reposition every single component, depending on how you make this. Um, so basically, I'm going to come here to the Haas. I'm going to say fixture. We're going to grab that 6-inch clamp. <clears throat> and right now, it's you don't see it because it's down in there. So I'm going to move this a little bit higher. Um, these T-slots, uh, we'll move this over, let's say, I don't know, 14 inches. No, we'll move it over 16 inches. Uh, we'll go 17. So it's sitting in that T-slot, in that center T-slot, and then what I could rotate this about my Z-axis at minus 90, okay? And now what I'll do is I'll pick the top face and I'll pick the bottom face here and do an aligned plane. And I'll just say OK and OK again. And yeah, I don't have, uh, you know, this isn't extended all the way down to the table. Uh, this isn't going all the way down to the T-slot, but, you know, my tool's not going to you know, the, the top is enough for collision checking. So uh, to position this, you know, I can place it wherever I want. If I want to edit it, I can go back in here. And I have this, this is listed separately under its own uh, hierarchy. If I do, double click it, I can, let's just make this negative uh, 100. And it rotates about the T-slot. So that would be a little bit more realistic because this backstop is not going to, I'm not going to want it inside of the, to, to sit inside of the, uh, uh, you know, to come down into the T-slot. I want it onto the table. So it would sit something like this. So basically, uh, that's how you would create a, you know, random uh, type of fixture assembly component that you wanted to use. Uh, so hopefully this helps you in building more accurate uh, representations of your fixturing.